before we start though, I wanted to, to um, uh, talk about a little something that I'm looking at for the past few days, maybe a week. I don't really know. Because time, linear time for me is like a little bit, you know, of a challenge. I'm a little bit time challenged. <laughs> um, so I've been looking at the whole light dark um, situation on our timeline. And I recall when I was a toddler and I realized which timeline I was on and I totally freaked out. I don't know if you guys heard the story, but I was a little toddler. I don't know, I must have been like two or three or four or something like that. And um, there was, uh, my brother was in school. He was four years older than me and he brought home a history book. And the history book was showing people in castles killing each other, right? People underneath the castle and on top of the castle, throwing hot oil onto the bad guys on the bottom and stuff, right? And I was looking at it at all, and I, and I said to my mom, you know, something like, I can't recall exactly, but it was like a situation where I went to my mom and says, what's going on here? Why are these people hurting each other? And she says, oh, that's called a war. And um, you know, so what happens in war? I say, well, people kill each other for stuff. And it's like, what's that stuff? And then she was explaining. And at the end of the conversation, I thought, oh, thank goodness we don't live in that time anymore, isn't it? That we don't have wars anymore. And she said, uh, oh, but we do. We have a war right now in Vietnam. And I was like, uh-oh. You know, and I tapped into the timeline that I was at. And I saw something. I saw something. And it completely freaked me out. I thought that I'm, I can't do this. I can't be in this timeline. There's no way. I'm not going to survive. It's, it's just I'm not going to do it. I'm out of here. Right. And, um, and then it was like I, was, I started crying because it was just so desperate. And I remember the most desperate energy was the cruelty, right? The cruelty of one human doing something to another through the cruelty energy, not through defense or um, fear or whatever, but it was the actual cruelty of it. And um, I freaked out and I started crying and I didn't cry, didn't stop crying for days. And I think on the third day, because I was crying nonstop, I, nothing was coming out anymore, or even sound. Excuse me. Ah, ah sneeze. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> um, it took me to the doctor and they injected me with Valium. That was the 60s, <laughs> like late 60s. They do that, don't they? <laughs> they used to do that. Valium for everything. And then I went to sleep and they put like, uh, I was completely dehydrated because I hadn't eaten or drank anything for three days. Just cried. And, um, and I went to sleep and I woke up and it was fine. You know, so everything was tickety-boo and I was fine. And, you know, life went on. And then throughout, every time I recall that moment, I, ha I have a sense, I can sense that energy. And it was, you know, it's like when we decided uh, as a planetary species and a planetary uh, collective, actually, it is planetary because it involves all the animals, the trees, the plants, rocks, everything, Gaia. And we decided as a planetary consciousness to experience light dark because our source, and I've said this again many times before, the source energy of the human species and Gaia it's light. There's not two ways about it. It is light, the one that we're on. And when we decided to experience light dark, we allowed or we invited dark entities and energies to come in to cohabitate with us so we could have that game, so we could have that experience. And why do I say that the essence of the human species and the planetary essence of source is light? Because there's proof all around us uh, every mythology on the planet will talk about this. Whenever somebody does a lot of spiritual work, they don't say, and I went into the purple or the dark or into suffering. They actually go into uh, light and they experience it as light. They experience it as extreme, absolute love, um, unconditional oneness, acceptance, peace. Uh, satisfaction, uh, full potential, they experience it like this. And the other proof that we have is that in every single country that has gone to war, even if it's not in their own land, 
the soldiers come back broken. And the US Army, and this is statistics that you can look up online, you can uh, have a look and see this for yourself. The US soldiers, more soldiers and vets die of suicide than they have done from bullets or injury out there in the, you know, wherever they go. And that's, the, that's part of that data that will tell you the human person is not created to survive or to flourish in darkness and cruelty and pain and destruction of that sort. They, they just break, you know, most of them, like the great majority, not all of them, but the great majority will break. They don't flourish. They don't fulfill, become fully fulfilled and happy. They, they go the other way. So I was looking at that and I was looking at the energy, that dark energy that is infusing this particular timeline because, I mean, there, there were worse ones, um, but not many. And I think most of those got blown up. The, the, the species blew itself up or blew up the planet or something. It was a destruction. Um, and the, the thing that I saw was that it was like visually speaking, what we could say maybe is what we invited was for, uh, because light cannot be, cannot coexist in the same space, not in this dimension or this matrix as la as dark, um, it was kind of next to each other, right? So it was almost like every atom, perhaps, or every cell was encased in that dark energy. And that's why there's that sense of separation um, that we can't see anything past our individuality or very difficult to see anything past our own singular self or to connect with others because there's a layer of that darkness surrounding everything. It could be like, you could visualize it like a sock or, or something that encases it but it cannot absorb it, it cannot touch it as such. And I was looking at it thinking, you know, when you first look at it, it's like, whoa, but thinking, well, what is our choice here? Um, for me, I'm just observing it at the moment. Um, this is not like victim aggressor, it's not an act of um, conquering, even though maybe from that perspective it was, from their perspective, um, it's not an act of aggression as such, but every time that we interact with that energy, it is painful, it is sad, it is cruel. So, or well, that's how we perceive it. This is how we experience it. You might be just saying, hi, and we go, you know, we're covered in blood and guts everywhere. So it's like, how do we interact with that? Or, or it's like, how do we, do we want to dissolve it? What do we want to do with it? And that's what I wanted us to look at, because when I look at it, I can see, I can feel it shifting and dissolving off of my atoms, right, and off of my body. And it's like an instinct, I suppose. It's instinctual, maybe it's a physical thing, it's a physical body thing. Like, yeah, that's not our natural state. Let's, you know, dissolve it. And it goes away. And then I was looking at it, I was looking at somebody yesterday who was in a great deal of pain, and I could see that she was wrapped in a lot of this dark stuff, right? Um, and I was thinking, well, is it up to me to look, observe, and dissolve that darkness around her? Or is it up to her? Do I tell her? Is she going to freak out? <laughs> you know, and it's like, what do we do? And then I was looking this morning, thinking, well, what if we choose a geographical area and how much choice or how much power maybe do we have to choose how much of that dark energy encases people, beings, rocks, plants, flowers in a particular geographical area? And are we being like uh, imposing our own wishes and senses or power over them because most people don't even see it they don't they don't even perceive it or that that's darkness or that coolness it's unnatural they think it's natural and normal because they experienced it their entire lives <clears throat> so i was looking at it you know and i actually don't know i don't know and i thought maybe we could do an experiment but even doing an experiment you know 
are we enforcing something on others? You know, how far do we go? And it's like, yeah, we can see person to person or like if we could get a map. And I was thinking we could get a map somewhere. <clears throat> but to see the difference, we would have to have a location that would be not touched, perhaps, you know, and then one of light. And would we do one of dark? You know, would we allow the dark to just completely take over our location? So soon, let's see what happens. And it's like that gets red flags, I think, in everybody thinking, ah, oh, done things, so let's not go there, let's not do that. And as I was looking at that, the whole permission thing, um, I could feel that dark energy trying to encase me like a sock kind of thing, you know, strike that encase me. And I could feel the desperation and sadness and cruelty and like hopelessness starting to, to go down into my physical body. And I thought, I don't think so, you know, and it's gone, right? But that actually also taught me that um, once we become aware it is no longer somebody else's choice. Yeah? It's no longer the collective choosing to have a light dark experience and us being born here and kind of agreeing in a certain way, unconsciously most of us, to have that experience. Once we become aware of it and see it, it is that. It is, it is a choice. And... Um, if you feel it now and you can, you know, if you feel it surrounding your atoms or your cells or something and you can see it dissolve. And I know that a lot of you have started that already. As soon as I was looking at it, you started dissolving your own. What do you feel? It's like every time I do it, I feel a sense of freedom. That's the only thing I can say. It's like, oh, I can breathe now. You know, it's like I feel so free and joyful. And it's, it's almost like there's no fear. So, yeah, it's, it's, it would be interesting um, to see to what level we can actually do that because it's our planet. This is our planet. We belong to it. It belongs to us. And this is our reality. This is our experience. And, you know, we could choose a geographical area. I could volunteer one <laughs> and see what happens, you know. And, um, and anybody who... I mean, if we get people or beings saying, you're uh, abusing your power over here, we're going to find out about it. We're going to know. I don't think it's going to be such an unconscious thing anymore. But it would be interesting to see if that geogra what happens to ge that geographical area. And I I've got to ask permission, of course, you know, to the people or at least one person that belongs to the place. <laughs> And, and then I will post it on the forum 